Phoenix Productions going on again. I am the aforementioned Dark Lord of Optics, messing with another camera, shotgun mic. So this is where I delivered the optical affiliation, I suppose. It's my upper deck, this is the view I get. The mountains, upper deck, about 20 miles out. I see a lot of things in between. I've got three scopes here I'm looking at. Zoom out a little bit. See, they are in focus. Look to be the reserve focus. This, this camera has a tendency to hunt uh, for focus. I hope you can see me well. I hope the focus is not moving in and out uh, too much. My chief rifle scope testing technician named Julie is here to say hi for Julie. She helps me look at the rifle scopes, for which we've got a convenient chair. Julie, wave to the camera and say hi. So which one of these do you think you like? Uh, this one. This one? Okay. Julia likes the Vortex. Thank you, sweetie. Okay. Let me see if the camera is working. Okay. Julia, stay here. Look through all three scopes. Tell me which one you like. This one. This one? Now you like the F one? Okay. Why do you like this one more? Because um, I can it, it, it can keep me focused for longer. Oh, okay, all right. Thank you, sweetie. I'll let me take over. Okay. It's very convenient to have kids you can use to check focus. Let's hope this works. I've got three scopes here. I've got Athlon Ares ETR four and a half to thirty by fifty six. I've got Delta Striker HD. Four and a half to 30 by 56 and I've got Vortex PST Gen 2 5 to 25 by 50 I've got a few other scopes around but for now I figured I'll mount these three on here and just kind of give you a rundown because um, you start about thousand to eleven hundred dollars twelve to thirteen hundred and this goes up to about seventeen hundred sixteen hundred somewhere there uh, China Philippines uh, Japan they go after the same uh, general market, uh, uh, so to speak. So the PST and the Striker I've been using for some time. Uh, the Ares ETR is new. I've also compared it to Ares BTR, so I know how they compare. I can talk to that. Uh, last night, I did the same thing I'm doing now, except in low light. And I get to look out in the valley where there's a lot of bright lights and things like that, and it gives me a really good um, idea how the stray light issues uh, uh, affect the scope. I tested all of these without sunshades, but I do have a sunshade. I know I have a sunshade for the Delta, I don't remember about the Vortex. I think I do. And they all performed reasonably well. So once you start, um, I talked a little bit, I compared these at the range at 20 power. In a low light, I looked at, the, I looked at them in low power, and right now they're all set in 10 power. And I'm looking pretty far out. And then I've got some more uh, closer up objects to look at. I can look at monotonous uh, uh, green leaves in low light, which is sort of an interesting exercise. And then, you know, I just go and, I just go and scan across the valley. So weirdly enough, scanning like this gives you a really good grip of how we're giving the eye relief is, right? Because as I'm changing, I have to track the scope with my eye. And with some, it is easier than others. Let's go to 25, which is where the vortex comes uh, out. On the Ares, 16 is marked, 20 is marked, 25 is not marked. I'll make an educated guess, but later then I'll remeasure where 25 actually is. So once you go up to 25 power, a few things happen. One of them is that you are looking at something you don't want to look at. There you go. Let's look at it church over there, some leaves, and the freeway, things like that. So one of the nice things about these scopes is that as you get up to 25, you don't have any real loss of contrast, at least not a, per maybe it's not a perceptible one. So when you uh, go on the internet and look at a review where somebody says, oh, this scope uh, 
is not clear anymore at uh, a high power. What they need, so clear in this case is not an optical term, right? When you're talking about images, clear doesn't mean a whole lot, right? But what they mean is the loss of contrast, right? The colors look a little bit faded. Uh, blacks are not as black, whites is not as white. Everything looks kind of grayish, and the colors are faded. That's that's what happens with a lot of scopes when they go to high power. I don't see it here all at 25. Striker, well, I mean, I've had the striker for a while, so I know it's good. Uh, it just looks excellent. I'm looking at 30 power. I'm looking at this church, at the roof of this church over there, where there are vertical nails. I can see every nail. It's like amount of chromatic aberration. Eris ETR on the same high power. I can see more or less the same things, just just a touch less clearly, less sharp. Let's see if we can clean that up with side focus. I guess a little bit better. Okay, you can see a lot of this stuff, but you see some distortion at the edges, a little bit more. Then you see it with the Striker, and then you would see with the Athlon Chronos, right? So, Striker HD is a very similar design to the Athlon Chronos, and it forms somewhat similarly. This particular Striker is better at high magnification than a couple of Chronos scopes that I've seen, but it's close enough where it could be sample variation, right? The Ares is up there, probably close to some of the Chronos that I've seen. Maybe a half a step back. I mean, I'm looking right now at some very monotonous yellowish things, and it's really very respectful. And I'm at 30 power. That's a lot of magnification. There's just a little bit more chromatic aberration at the high magnification as you move out. And this chromatic aberration is uh, notably more uh, prominent when you are closer to the edges. The Delta, the Striker, maintains this pretty decent optical performance much closer to the edge than does the Eris and maintains the color there without uh, too much stuff happening. For, exa for example, when I move my eye behind the scope, right, when you, when you see me doing this now right now a little bit, the center aiming point on the Eris stays uh, in, in focus and uh, doesn't move, right, I've uh, adjusted for parallax. However, some parts of the grid as you get closer to the edge they move a little bit. There is some parallax closer to the edge that's not existing in the center. On the delta, when I look at it, I can move behind the scope. It's fairly forgiving for eye relief, but uh, there is no parallax anywhere in the grid. So with the Ares, if I want to use a portion of the grid that's closer to the edge, I basic I can dial out the parallax the edge right now it's dial out on the edge but there's a little bit in the center right uh, right now it's dial out in the center and there's a little bit in the edge it's not hugely significant i'm looking at something almost 800 yards away but it's there and it's just something to be um, cognizant of to be aware of right with the viper pst there is a little bit of this stuff happening at the very edge also but generally once i've dialed the parallax out at high power at 25 it stays uh, dialed out. Yeah. I go to, let's say, low power. Let's go to six, six. Okay, six naturally is not. Okay, eight. They both have eight markings. Of course, somebody's gonna call me, probably my wife. I'll call her back in a minute. So when I am at 8 power, the view of all of this is just gorgeous. It's a it's beautiful, it's very easy to use, works well. But this is where one interesting thing that happens is that as you move your eye behind the scope, all of them have a little bit of this uh, fishbowl effect, right? You move your eye behind the scope and the edges kind of start to swim. It's a little bit like a rolling ball effect. And Delta has more than the Ares and the uh, and the PST. I have some ideas why I'm not sure. It's not enough to be distracting, but perhaps that's one of the design compromises. The Delta is really well optimized at high power and mid power, 
still very respectable at low power and the colors are just beautiful but something's got to give it. it's not a five thousand dollar scope so there's got to be a compromise uh, somewhere in terms of field of view the pst is clearly the wider field of view in the group right although i can't say can i don't have too much complaint with the delta or with the eras but the pst is really notably wider and you can see it right when you're trying to find something with a pst you don't have to dial back down as much but another thing to keep in mind pst is 5 to 25 these guys are both four and a half to 30. in, term, in practical terms if you look at the difference in uh I interesting eris uh, it's the first time i looked at the very low power Eris has picked up some interesting distortion and with the Eris, when you move your eye around with the Eris, you see a little bit of the metal cell that holds the reticle. There is some features there. With the Delta Striker, it's all blocked out. All you see is beautiful image and same with the PST. Is it a problem? No, not really. It doesn't affect anything, I don't care about it. And I only see the reticle cell if I start really moving my eye around the scope. But the colors are nice and rich beautiful in all three scopes. PST uh, colors are very slightly warmer. Okay. In terms of optical quality, how would I uh, rank these? Given that I did some low light uh, testing yesterday. Well, um, it kind of tracks with price. I thought the Delta was a little bit better. I thought that uh, at low magnifications, Ares and the PST were really close. Um, as you go to high magnifications, a large objective lens of the Ares uh, made a difference. So I would say Ares is slightly better than the PST Gen 2, but it is close. That having been said, um, I can only reinforce that as far as the Chinese uh, OEMs go, the Ares hyposcope here with your way I have another scope here doesn't make it easier let's point let's point with objective so the Ares here is a spectacular achievement it's a really it's a really nice scope okay what else uh, depth of field so depth of field is better on the vortex than on the other two and uh, I have some uh, uh, radical pictures that I took at the range uh, on Friday that kind of show you that right up at the range. Uh, yeah, I'll post the pictures and you'll see. But both are fairly respectable in terms of turrets. So a Delta and the Vortex both track well. If you listen to the sound, the sound of these two is fairly muffled. The sound of the Ares is stiffer and louder. We'll see how it breaks in. All three have a zero stop. Um, I'm, I slightly prefer the Delta turrets now so it's very similar to the Kronos turrets and they're more distinct than the PST with a similar level of uh, a similar level of resistance the windage turret on the Delta is lower profile also with excellent feel and it tracks perfectly but uh, it does not lock on the PST the windage turret also does not lock on the Ares BTR it's a pop-up turret it's brilliant love it this is for people like me, the way I shoot, so I want to have a zero stop in elevation. I want to cover the locking uh, windage. Right? Um, I think strikers coming out with the uh, locking turrets also. I need to look at as well. But for now, um, in terms of the arrangement, this is great for me. A uh, nice elevation turret that I think will break in and uh, become a little bit less loud as we go along. With the feel is good, and the locking windage, uh, I'm happy. In terms of the parallax, so I didn't have any issues with any of these. Uh, the they all focus down to about 20, 25 yards. They go in different directions. PST is, what is it, uh, uh, clockwise, and uh, both the Ares and the Delta are counterclockwise. In terms of the range of motion, of movement on the Delta, the range is the smallest. It's about 180 degrees of rotation. On the PST, it's 270 degrees. 
and on the Ares it's quite close to 180 I think, right? Yeah, it's about 180 degrees, so a little bit more travel in the Ares than the Delta, but not by much. And uh, the slowest adjustment is clearly the PST, and that is one thing that I really appreciate. I'm in no rush, I want a lot of adjustment. That having been said, I've been using the Delta for the better part of the year. Um, I've been using it uh, quite a bit. And I gotta say that the parallax has not given me any trouble whatsoever shooting anywhere between 25 yards. And the longest I took this thing out was at 1,000 yards. So I'm gonna take it out to a mile at some point. But uh, sitting on my 3.8, so 1,000 yards is reasonable. I have not had any issue dialing out the parallax. Okay. As far as illumination goes on the delta, the uh, center spot I think is illuminated. On the vortex, um, I think it's the whole grid. On the Aris, I think it's the whole grid, but I need to look at it. I just got it, I don't, don't have a battery. In there, uh, on the Delta, on the Vortex, I have not had any issues whatsoever with how uh, radical illumination uh, works. All in all, I'm pretty happy with all three scopes so far. I am going to uh, spend a lot of time shooting the Ares. So like I said, this is the highest end uh, Chinese OM scope, ri precision rifle scope I've seen to date. So I am going to spend some time working it out. I like what I see so far. Is it truly competitive with the Japanese scopes like the Striker HD and the you know, Athlon Zone Chronos, which is you know, based on the same uh, design? It's hard to say. At first blush, yeah, I think it is. Uh, how does it last over time and all that? I don't know. Only the market will tell you. I'm going to spend some time busy it up and we'll see. It goes. Uh, the PST is about to go back to Vortex. I'm done with it. Uh, the PST Gen 2 is a significant step up compared to the PST uh, Gen 1, and I have added it to my list of recommendations. I don't have any issues uh, recommending this design to people. It works really well. That having been said, I think the cherry of the PST, PST Gen 2 uh, lineup is a 3 to 15 model. I think it is not of the better. Uh, but the 5 to 25 is quite good uh, uh, as well. The 2.5 to 5 by 32 I wasn't as impressed with. Um, but um, if you're looking for a basic uh, precision scope in the thousand yard, thousand dollar range between the PST and the Ares, you know, thousand twelve hundred dollar range, you've got some really good options. And if these prove to be holding up, the PST seems to be holding up. Um, the between basically between this range from my thousand dollars to seventeen hundred dollars or, or so for normal people the making the case for three four thousand dollars scope gets increasingly more difficult and that's coming from a guy who absolutely loves tangent data right i use the tangent data 3 to 15 i think it's the best scope in the market love it it works great uh but if i were buying sc uh, scopes now and i was on something of a budget it would be really hard to um, make a case that's something like a Schmidt and Bender or Carlis or Minox or Tangent Data at three thousand, uh, three and a half thousand, four and a half thousand dollars sometimes really makes sense. If you really want to go high end, just get a Tangent Data. I think these are the best precision scopes in the market right now and be done with it. Will cost you a lot of money, but uh, you know that's the least amount of compromises in the rifle scope out in the market now. Uh, but if you start making compromises on something, you will quickly get down to the $1,700 range where there's a Delta Striker and Athlon uh, Kronos. And uh, these are exceedingly competent designs, right? This is the trend that was started with Vortex Razor Gen 2, which competes against these, right? And Razor Gen 2 is a little more expensive, and I'm not sure if, it, if, I, if I would take it over the Delta. I think they perform very similarly, except the Delta is a little bit lighter, and... Uh, so I'm basically trading weight for the wider field of view of the Vortex. Um, I don't know, the $1,700, $1,800 uh, range is getting really, really good. And the $1,000 range, like for these two guys, is getting really, really good. Uh, to reiterate something I said earlier on the hide, is that uh, uh, 
with the precision shooters and the precision guide heart. We live in an amazing era for rifle and until digital hits rifle I think uh, well, very fortunate. I remember 15, 20 years ago when I was starting out on this, uh, nothing like these scopes existed. Right to get a truly tactical scope, variable tactical scope, your options were very limited. There were loopholes with well-known issues. There were the Schmitz that were up top. The reticles were nowhere near where they are now. There wasn't nearly as much competition. Collis wasn't really doing this. Um, it was a different world. Now we are drowning in options and making a choice is increasingly difficult you know that's sort of why I do this try to help you guys make a choice but uh, it's not a difficult choice anymore uh, pick a radical you like and buy a scope from a reputable manufacturer and you're probably gonna be fine in many ways I'm splitting hairs right I'm one of the reasons I really like the Delta is that I like I prefer this radical all three have good radicals I'll post some radical pictures. I prefer this radical, basically. Uh, right? It's a little better optically at high power, so it's good for spotting conditions. But uh, these are all really, really nice scopes. Anyhow, thank you for watching this. I hope the sound came out okay. I'm using a shotgun mic, experimenting with it a little bit. I hope the sounds good. Um, if it's not, I guess I'll re-record. Uh, go on my website, darkboardofoptics.com. Uh, going to be shopping at Amazon or Brownells, any of these places. If you start my website, um, I get something for it. doesn't cost you anything extra. And uh, every little bit uh, helps to get gear, to spend the time, to do the write-ups, uh, to do these reviews. And uh, thank you for watching.